squeak on shift happens, we deconstruct the conversation we just had a few days ago with Bruce Celery, who is the CEO of Credit Canada, but also an author and a podcaster and an, uh, an all around great guy in the industry. Bruce talked about how we needed to do a better job of helping people to take action. He, he strongly disagreed with the notion of the concept of financial literacy. And like many people, he says he uses it because that's the terminology the industry uses to talk about how people understand things. But he made a really critical point that I have to say that I agree with, and that is literacy is not just being able to recite statistics and understand what acronyms stand for uh, and, and, and going through rote information. It is the sort of thing that is tangible, that lives in your heart, that you know you need to be doing because of it changing your behavior. So the ultimate, the word here that we're talking about that really is where the rubber hits the road is behavior. What can we do in the financial services industry to help people do a better job of changing their behavior? Now, there are a lot of uh, hacks that people can think of and a lot of things that we can talk about that are simply matters of, you don't even have to worry about teaching people what the terminology is. Find a way to pay your credit card bill when it's due at in the middle of the month, find a way to make sure you can put a put a put a reminder into your calendar, but make sure that you actually have the behavior to pay things off in full and on time. Have the behavior to set up a regular savings plan. Now, in this case, and many people, if you are the sort of person who has a a, a budget and you don't have a lot of money left over at the end of the month. The great thing that you can be doing is paying yourself first. And if you can only afford to save, let's say, $300 a month, have that $300 go, go directly into your RRSP at the beginning of the month and then learn to live off the money that's left over after that $300 comes off. It's the sort of thing that a lot of people have talked about. Bruce talks about it. I know I talk about it with my clients. It's the sort of thing that David Chilton at The Wealthy Barber has been talking about for 25 or 30 years. I, I'm going to say 30 years. Pay yourself first is a very simple hack that people can do to do a better job of ensuring their financial um, success without having to spend a lot of time thinking about it. In fact, in many people believe that changing the behavior to paying yourself first and having the money go into your uh, registered accounts automatically is the best way to change your behavior because you don't even realize you're behaving. You've set it up once and then oftentimes people who once they've set it up, they might feel the pinch for the first two or three months but after that, it becomes normalized. They grow accustomed to living off a little less money and they save without even realizing that they're saving because they've gotten to the habit, the behavior of saving automatically. It's the sort of thing that if you could change your behavior and it's almost like it's a game. Think of what you can do. Can you, can you find ways to, to pay off your bills? to save automatically? What can you do to maybe rebalance your portfolio? Don't, don't everyone do it on January 1st. Maybe you do it on your birthday. Maybe you want to rebalance your portfolio twice a year. So you rebalance your portfolio when you set your clocks forward and set your clocks back for daylight savings time coming and going. Whatever it is, develop some hacks so that you can change your behavior to do what you, you know you need to be doing, but you otherwise might forget or might not get around to and you might procrastinate, do it because it's the right thing to do. If you can make it into a game, if you can gamify good financial habits, you'll be much better off over time. We'll talk to you next week. John DeGuey is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. He is the author of both Bullshift, How Optimism Bias Threatens Your Finances, and Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry, Protecting Yourself from Well-Intended but Oblivious Advisors. The books are available online and in bookstores everywhere. The opinions expressed on Bullshift and Shift Happens should not be construed as investment advice. You can reach John at jdegui at designsecurities.ca or at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647-782-6387.